climate change is affecting everyone. But some of us are feeling its effects more than others. Current scientific predictions suggest that the greatest burden of climate change will fall on poor and developing countries. Everywhere in the world today, people are searching for ways to reduce the threat of global warming, both by limiting greenhouse gas emissions and by fighting the blight of deforestation. We feel deeply that environmental goals and development goals must be part of a complementary agenda. We can serve one set of goals only if we also serve the other. For 50 years, the Aga Khan Development Network has worked with communities to develop sustainable solutions to environmental and social challenges. Even before this became a common term, the AKDN working with government and civil society was helping communities cope with threats from droughts, soil degradation, deforestation, floods and hunger. In Pakistan, more than 60% of households burn firewood and straw for their cooking and heating requirements. The AKDN set up the Building and Construction Improvement Program to pioneer locally made housing improvements that were small scale but could have a large impact on the quality of life. Along with 70 other small-scale innovations, BASIP has designed a more efficient stove that is also smoke-free, reducing respiratory conditions while using less wood. A number of small companies have sprung up to produce BASIP's energy-efficient products, creating an industry around these innovations. On a larger scale, more than 100 million trees have been planted in Pakistan alone to combat deforestation, create a renewable source of fuel, and provide a better environment for biodiversity. In this way, AKDN's climate resilience measures become part of the same equation as poverty alleviation and development. This ethical framework of helping people become self-reliant rather than dependent assists communities in Pakistan to manage their own energy. In remote villages far off the grid, small-scale hydroelectric schemes create clean energy supplies for remote communities. One such program provides 50% of the electricity to the valley of Chitral. In coastal areas, such as Gujarat, India, overpumping has depleted aquifers and allowed seawater to move inland as much as 500 yards a year. And this child's name is Gopal. He told uh, his cousin to take uh, to take him to the doctor and they went to the doctor and such a big stone was found in his kidneys this is the water people drink let's test the result is highly I mean saline it's around 6000 ppm ppm is parts per million in uh, a liter of water 
according to the World Health Organization, it should be around 500 ppm, but it is 12 times more. So we are just in the fully saline zone, and this is not drinkable water. The AKDN has built check dams and recharge wells to rebuild fresh water supplies. It has also introduced drip and sprinkler irrigation, as well as crops that can grow in saline water, like beetle and chiku. Rainwater harvesting systems help save enough water to carry a family through the dry season. Mountain environments also face climate-related dangers. When the Aga Khan Development Network first arrived in Tajikistan in the early 1990s to provide emergency aid to remote areas like Gornabatakshan, the pain of a civil war was compounded by the end of Soviet-era subsidies, particularly for food and fuel. Unable to grow food or buy fuel, the population cut down 80% of forest cover in the region. Food aid warded off famine, but food security would rely on the local people's ability to grow their own food. In the first 10 years of aid, food security rose from 15% to over 70%, and reforestation efforts began. An obsolete Soviet hydropower station was expanded and brought online. In partnership with the newly formed governments, His Highness the Aga Khan established the University of Central Asia, dedicated to the broad range of development challenges in mountain societies. Campuses are currently being built in Tajikistan, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. Climate change is also expected to drive ever more migrants to the cities. To address the rapid urbanization, AKDN has built a number of parks in developing countries. In Africa's fastest growing city, Bamako in Mali, AKDN worked with the government to create the 250-acre national park. Je peux dire c'est vraiment l'une des plus belles endroits que je n'ai pas encore visité. Et vraiment c'est un travail très formidable. Surtout l'aspect d'avoir conservé la nature, c'est vraiment ce qui m'a beaucoup impressionné. In Cairo, the Aga Khan Trust for Culture transformed this 75-acre former dump site into a welcoming oasis. Al Azhar Park, a green lung for Cairo, is visited by over two million people every year. Each generation must leave for its successors an enhanced and sustainable social and physical environment. I'm sure every responsible citizen in every part of the world would share this aspiration. For the Aga Khan Development Network, preparing communities to be resilient in the face of climatic changes has always been closely integrated with development. Today this dual task appears to be even more urgent. <laughs>